guys and welcome back to Thinker Thema. I'm Amy, a thinker all about mechanics and this is my lovely fiance Maggie Hello. who is all about the story that the designers trying to tell and the overall theme of the mm. game. Now lately Maggie we have been doing a lot of hotness games. Yes we have. Like everything new is coming in the door and we can't wait to get them to the table and play them and review them but I think it's time we went back to some of our classics, yes. the games that we trusted. When someone says, Loved. can I come over and learn a game? You know those games that are so reliable that you always turn to because you just love them so much. <laughs> so today we are doing one of those games and we are looking at Awkward Guess. Mm. Awkward Guess was originally a Spanish game um, called Incomodos Invertidos. <laughs> In <laughs> also known as Incomodos Invitados. Mm. For those of you playing at um, And the designer is Ron Gonzalo Garcia. And it's by Mega Corpin Games. And actually, it was originally on Kickstarter, but it passed me by. I didn't um, mm. actually see this game. And so I picked it up, um, you know, kind of someone had an extra copy. And so I bought it from them. And I absolutely <laughs> love this game. I love this game so much. If you've ever played the game Clue, um, or in Australia, it's called Cluedo. Mm -hmm. um, this is a reimagining of that game to bring it into modern board game territory. Yeah. So in Awkward Guests, you are playing the role of, I believe you would be uh, private detectives, and you are trying to figure out, there's been a murder, uh, Mr. Walton has been assassinated, and you're trying to figure out who the murderer is, uh, how they did it, so what weapon they use, what their motivation was, uh, and also if they had an accomplice or not. And to do that, you're going to be pulling together clues from both the servants in the house, as well as from the police reports. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time you say there's been a murder, I think of it in like British murder series. Yeah. Like, there's been a murder. Yeah, there's like, been a murder. <laughs> every single time. All of those British uh, yeah, murder. <laughs> there's a lot of murder shows. Like, there are yeah. a lot of murder yeah. shows. Yeah. Anyway. I'm so obsessed with it, yeah. Um, back to Awkward Guess. This game is actually BGG. It's like, it's more highly ranked as, as, as a family game, which is really surprising mm. to me because actually it's deeply thinky. And it's like quite a hard puzzle to solve. And um, the, the system that sits beneath it is just so clever. So yeah. the way that it works and the way that they set up a case. So every time you play this game, um, the case is slightly different. So if you imagine in Cluedo, um, or Clue, sorry, mm -hmm. I'll call it Clue, um, you are trying to narrow down on the suspect, the room um, where they committed the murder, and uh, also the weapon mm. and you know everyone knows how that game kind of plays out but in this one you're trying to work out um, who did it the motive why mm -hmm. they did it um, how they did it so the weapon again um, and also whether they had an accomplice and uh, what was the accomplice's motive so that's a lot of different things yeah. to work out but there are almost an infinite possibilities of the combination of things that go into each one of these mm. cases. And the way they've designed this is through this, um, what do they call it? An, a brilliant deck system. Mm. This brilliant deck system here, where there are cards that are sorted by number on the back of the cards, and you have a case. So in the back of the in instructions, mm. um, back of the rule booklet, there are different cases. So you can pick the level of difficulty of that case, like easy all the way through to very difficult or expert. And it will tell you mm. the combination of cards to pull out of those different decks to yep. then shuffle together and that becomes the game. So they've worked out how all of those clues that are contained on the cards come together to help people um, ultimately work out who done it. Very clever. Very, very clever. Mm. And a lot of a few people have complained about how long that takes to set up. And to those people I say it's much easier than setting up a Euro board game. Yeah. It's, it takes maybe like two or three minutes. So you're just running through and it'll be like, take out card two, seven, mm. 11, and you just run through and pull them light. You can do it before you start teaching your group the game. Um, but what's really cool about um, the cards themselves is in this game, everybody will be dealt a hand of clues. And all of those clues relate to the player board that you have, which is actually a piece of paper, which is a, um, a floor plan of the house where Mr. Walton has been mm. murdered. Now we know he's been murdered in the study, 
And so this game is a deduction game where you're trying to rule out people and rule out paths to get to the study and rule out weapons to ultimately work out who did, who mm-hmm. did it and how and why and um, give that a guess. And um, the game also comes with a companion app. Mm-hmm. And so that makes setup really quick. You can just pick the case. Um, but what's really, really cool and what I love about this, this app in particular is that in the original game Clue, when someone's worked out what or they think they have the answer, yeah. they can give it a go and they have to look at the cards that are contained in the envelope. And if they get it wrong, well, now you've found out what the answer is and so you're out of the game and yeah. then you miserably sit while everyone plays <laughs> out the rest of the game, else watch play. everyone else have fun. In this game, once you have what you think is the clue, at the end of each round, everybody reveals from their hand a token that says either I'm still thinking or I want to give it a go. Mm-hmm. And if you do want to guess, you type in all of the relevant factors into the app and the app tells you whether you've cracked the case or not. Mm-hmm. But the way that it does it is so good because it has a sound effect. Yeah. And it's either like if you do get it, it's like woo! cheering and clapping and everyone knows that you've successfully cracked the game you've won the game if you don't it is the most depressing like (laughs) and it's just because you do it publicly and you're like i've got this and you're typing it in Mm. and then there's a sound effect it's just hilarious yeah and um, it means that you have to sit out from the next round in terms of guessing or Mm. cracking the case um, but you're still in the game because you haven't found out the app knows but Mm. you don't know yeah what the actual correct answer is yeah Now, what you're doing in the game, sorry, that was a very (laughs) long-winded intro, but what you're doing in the game is on this piece of paper, you are trading pieces of information with your fellow opponents or fellow detectives. Mm. And so every every round you are asking, when it's your turn, you're asking for two pieces of information, either about a room location or about um, one of the suspects. Mm. And on the cards... Um, those rooms and suspects are referenced in the corner. So you know that this clue pertains to the kitchen and to, um, you know, Angelica, one of the Mm -hmm. suspects. And you can only provide that person with information. Like you can't lie. You have to, you have to say, okay, I've got some cards that I can trade with you that relate to those things. So say I have three points of information that's about what Maggie has asked for. I will put it on the table, put a marker on it to show that I have three points worth of information. I should say that each card has either one, two or three points worth of information. um, And you can trade as many cards as you want to offer up, which is quite interesting because a card that has three points worth of information is a more valuable clue and it rules out more things in the game. So it might be like um, on a card it could say, Um, Mr. Walton did not die from a bladed weapon. And so Mm -hmm. every bladed weapon, kitchen knife, letter opener, machete, saber, they are all out of the game, out of consideration. Um, And so you might withhold information from Mm -hmm. the group. So if you have something particularly valuable, you might withhold it, but that only does yourself a disservice because then if you're holding it in your hands, you are exchanging less, fewer points Mm. Uh, which means that you're not getting as much information back. And so that's how I think this game is really clever. You can also, if you're smart, watch who you've traded with and kind of... Uh, That's beyond me. I have never been able to do this. But yeah, that is a strategy. Yeah, Yeah, so if I've been trading a lot with Maggie throughout the game, I'll be like, if I trade with Maggie again, I'm just going to get the same clues back. So I might start trading with someone else um, who Maggie hasn't been trading with. You know, you're trying to work out where are the fresh clues in this game. Mm. Um, And at the end of the round, you actually get to burn some of the cards in your hand and put them out of the game for, for a few rounds. And that means that if you've got a a really good clue you might actually exclude others from yeah from receiving it it's really comes down to how well can you note take so mm-hmm. you need to be really clever about the notes that you leave yourself on here to try and work out before anyone else the answer and i just absolutely love this game i think because of clue and cluedo everyone has a baseline understanding yeah. of what it is it's yeah. just adding far more complexity it's hard it is so hard. I have never been able to win this. And I am, to this day, every time it happens with people are voting, I'm like, how could... I'm nowhere near figuring out who it could possibly be. Or like, I may have eliminated a couple of maybe areas or types of weapons and that kind of stuff. But aside from that, I'm like, I'm nowhere near. So how are like... And often it's like two or three people are like, yeah, I'm ready to guess. I'm like, 
I have no idea. And I think in hearing you talk about the strategy of like checking who you've traded clues with before, there's so much going on that it's like that. I never think of that. And I often end up getting a clue that it's like, oh, I already had this. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> trade? Um, yeah, that with the same person. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's, it's, I love also the fact that because other guests can lie if they're accomplice, then, then you never really know when you have some of those clues if the, if the marks that you're making on your board or the notes that you're taking are really solid. Yeah, you have to also, you're never 100% sure. Yeah. You have to at some point just go, okay, I'm going to take a guess. Leap I've narrowed it down enough. Yeah. Mm. And the timing of that is important because then you'll miss out on the subsequent round yeah. of guessing. So it's actually yeah. better to guess earlier yeah. and then get that next round out of the way before other people. I love that the, the barrier to entry for this game is very low because everyone understands, like most people have played Clue or Cluedo and the concept is very easy to grasp. The The things that you're doing with the trading of the, the cards and the clues is very straightforward. So it's very easy to bring people who are not into games at all or who may have never had any kind of game literacy um, into this. The other thing is you never feel like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Like um, everyone's going to know that I'm doing this wrong because because you really don't know. Except what... when you get the wah wah. Yeah. So that's the only time when, you, when you've when you kind of gotten to the point where you're like, you're bold enough that you're like, ah, I'm confident enough that I know um, who, you know, all of the variables. But that's the only point. And it's like, yeah. and even if that happens, it's like you usually would have maybe one or two winners if two people guess at the same time. But it's not like, you know, in a game where you have victory points. Yeah, and you, can't you can't tell have, that you're you behind. You can't really see yeah. how far behind everybody else yeah, is. Yeah, until it's someone's like, raised guessing like, wow, I'm really far behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so it, which is my experience 100% yeah. of the time in this game. It's like, oh, I'm nowhere near it. But the other let's thing, see. Yeah. The other thing I love about this game is we have a, a good friend in our um, gaming group who's a police officer and he wins just about every time. And that just is so funny. So it's thematically, like, oh, there must be something there really must be accurate. Something in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, um, I wanted to say that this is a great um, game for bigger groups so obviously yes. we would never play this just the two of us no. I can't even imagine it working very well at three people I've played it at the full I think it's eight people yeah. and that was just a bit of a disaster because the game went on for way yeah, too long too much, yeah. but I think the sweet spot for this game is like around four or five mm -hmm. people it really shines and you've got enough people different people to trade with it's pretty quick yeah. it's super interesting because you're all working on your own yeah the, uh, 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 I just love this game oh and the artwork can we talk about yes. the artwork? Yeah. I mean, some people hate this, but I love how monochrome it is mm. because it makes it feel like you're sorting through a case. It file. makes it feel like film noir, like in the forties, yeah. those kind of crime type type movies. Yeah. 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 So the illustration is really quirky and mm. cool and just the fact that everything's really monotone makes it stand out in our collection. I like how it's also quite it's it, it's quite social in the sense that you're all constantly trading with one another, but you're not just generally chit chatting or talking about things, but you're doing the whole, you know, you get a clue and you're like, hmm, interesting. Yeah. And so it's, there's that kind of stuff, which is, which is quite fun. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we absolutely love this game. Yeah. I was still, you know, it's, it's, come out a lot in terms of getting out onto the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love to introduce everybody to it because it's like, oh, you like, you know, you liked Clue when you were younger. Yeah. Well, here's the modern version. So yeah. this will be staying in our collection for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah so Great review from us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Big that's why, up. you know, this is one of our favorites. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed this review. Um, if you did and you like other games like this, heavier strategy games, you know, feel free to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you've played this one before and what you think. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, we'll be back soon with more reviews. Bye for now. Bye.